Thank you so much, Maite, for coming to present this amazing film. That makes me cry so much. I don't know how you feel, but I went through several clinics. Um, and I've seen it many times. But um, this is, I was just thinking about this today. This is potentially one of the most beautiful love stories I've ever seen. Um, do you feel the same way? Yes, I feel the same way. And that was my first approach to them. I, I saw relationships so special, so unique in the context of the cyber that I invite them to make a love story film, not an Alzheimer film. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and that's amazing. Can you tell for the people that don't know, how did you encounter them for the first time and um, how the idea of the project came together? Yes, uh, well, they are, as, as did you see, they are very well known in Chile and I, I know them for all my life. I admire them a lot and I was, when he got Alzheimer, he openly made an interview in a magazine and, and he said that he has Alzheimer and I met him a couple of months after I was teaching in a university for Paulina's work and I saw them in that work context and she was with him in the work and he accompanied her and all the people that work with him, with her, integrate him and that was very uh, special because in my previous film I worked with people with dementia and everybody was so isolated from society and that was my topic, how the people that it's dependent it's isolated from society and here was completely the opposite. They were in the world uh, all the time in love and and I invite them like to, to sh because I wanted to shoot that a special way to understand the illness as a challenge and not as a tragedy and it was she didn't want it and her reasons were so powerful and clear that of course that she didn't want it to be exposed and and he was the one that convinced her in a very <laughs> clear and nice way and he said to her to us. Uh, I shoot at so many people in my life and so many people during dictatorship opened the doors of their house to show their own pain and their own fragility so why I'm not going mm -hmm. to open the door of my house to show my own fragility and that was like the point when, when he, she said like okay yeah uh, we have to do it and she's very grateful now for that decision that he take and he said that Probably that was his big, biggest act of consequence, like to shoot all his life and to spend the last years also uh, making making films. And and I am very grateful to be the one that made this legacy film. And how did you know, at what point did you realize that you had also needed to include like his book that he wrote, like the role that he played during the dictatorship, like just to let us know um, who he really was beyond just the person in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And how did you approach constructing the puzzle of the film, like going from the present to the past, as we see the fragility becoming more and more dramatic? Yeah, I think it's, it was something that the layers I discovered during the editing, I really, at the beginning I was completely focused on the present of, of the relationship and that was my focus during the shooting and, and in the road I realized that that he never forget nothing, that he was a man that always remember his pains, his loss and so I have to make the connections with other levels and to show the past and to show his work and when I when I saw that scene that he uh, remembered so perfectly the dictatorship and the friend that he lost, it was like I have to make the link with that moment and and with that point of his career because that it's there. So so I struck I started to construct that associations and levels because it was something that keeps in the body like. In that scene when he said, um, she said, do you love your house? Our house, no. Uh, why do we say your house? And for him was so important because she moved to his house and was always like the feeling that she 
felt that was not her house. So until the end, she ha he has that. And so that I had to put the archives of the construction of the house. Like, so that kind of as associations that help you to understand the present, but never, I was not trying to build the deterioration process of, of someone. Um, it was like an emotional remembering and as the um, book scene or, or that archive that for me, it was a gift that gave me the point of view of the film at the very end of the editing that that, that speech appear um, Paulina has a rat in the house so she called the exterminators and and they move a furniture that was in the wall and a, a hole appear where he hide during dictatorship many tapes mm -hmm. and I was finishing the film and she told me like this appearance was like I know <laughs> so, but that what I found. <laughs> That the speech appeared that, and it was really a gift to understanding when he said, like, the Chileans do not want, do not need to think in dates and information. We have to build our emotional memory, uh, and we have to construct the mornings from that place. And that it, it's what is happening to him. He didn't remember dates. He didn't remember informations, but the emotional memory is there. And, and it's the, this year that it's the 50 years anniversary of the coup in, in anniversary commemoration of the coup uh, in Chile. It's the first time in so many years that we started to hear so many negacionism speech about uh, human rights violations that we never heard before. And he's telling in a way, uh, okay, you can try to change information, you can try to erase information, you, get, you can forget information, but the pain of a country is going to keep in the body and you cannot erase that. And that it's the narrative that we have to build with the history, like which is the emotional memory and the emotional story of a country. And that is what is happening in his body. And that is why it's an eternal memory for him. I have more questions, but perhaps you do too. Anybody wants to comment the question? Yes, all the way in the back, and then we'll come here. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the transition to filming during COVID and um, them using the cameras? And yes. Um, well, I shoot for five years the film. The first I, I shoot for two years, then a year and a half of COVID, she, she shot it with her camera, and then I came back a year and a half. And when lockdown started in Chile, was really heavy. It was a year and a half with very strict uh, lockdown. You have to take permissions to go to the supermarket once per week. Like, you can really don't move. And at the beginning, I thought, well, the film is finished, but I will send her a camera until I will be back so it was, it was going to be research material for me until I will shoot, I, I will be back shooting. So uh, the camera was a kind of diary between us uh, during COVID and she said that it was a big company to her to have the camera. And she recorded and she sent me messages like, today I leave this three times and this happened to him and this happened to me and, and it was a kind of Converse, constantly conversation. I never asked to her like, please, can you do this scene for us? It was not the film. It was like um, a dialogue. And I tried to teach her a lot by Zoom how to use the camera. And she never learned. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely out of focus. And she get worse all the time. <laughs> the material was for me like, oh, I cannot believe it. It's so awful. So I thought I would never use it because it was so awful. And, and for me, it's so important to have the perfect shot and the perfect image and to make cinema as we understand the parameters. But at the end, I learned that that material, it's so deep, so unique. Even if I have all the access, I will never be there at 2 a.m. in the middle of the night. And, 
and it's so yeah intimate profound and real that it's yeah. a perfect material and and that it's what we need emotions not the perfect shot so yeah uh, it was a lesson about cinema <laughs> I felt like in the film um, he had very strong memories of his work and his reporting, but not as much of his wife and his partner. Did you feel the same way? And no, I feel that uh, no, he has a lot of, of. I think it's more. Of course, there's something that happened that he was younger when he did that than the years that he was with her, that was the last 25 years, that was when he was 20, 25, uh, not 40. So you remember better the, your first year when you have Alzheimer's, so probably mm -hmm. that's why it was so clear for them, that period of dictatorship and of life and because of the pain. And, but, yeah, but something that it's very special and unique, it's until he passed away, he never forget her. Mm -hmm. Like, I was thinking at the beginning I was going to make the film um, until the day that he didn't remember her. But that never happened. It happened things like he forget for a couple of hours, as, as we saw in the film, but not constantly forget her. And that it's means so much about that relationship. It's so beautiful when, like, there's a moment where they are in bed, when they are recording themselves, but he doesn't remember her name, but he knows exactly that mm. she's a wonderful woman, and yes. he's so happy to be with her. He's yeah. like, I'm so lucky. Do you want to be in bed with me? Yeah. An actress. <laughs> 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 Sweet and beautiful. Like, all the love is there, even if maybe the construct of who she is yeah. is not there. It's just incredible. We have a question over there. Uh, thank you for making such a wonderful film. Um, how did the, the, the both of them react when they saw it? Did they see it together? Yeah, I he didn't see it because when I finished it, he lost his he he cannot see and hear well. So with Paulina, we thought that it's going to be more painful to see it because he will not understand. Uh, I finished the shooting one year and a half be before he passed away. So. The deterioration after was completely extreme. He cannot move. He was bedridden. So that was the. He was like that when I finished it. So um, yeah, it doesn't have sense for us. Uh, we explained him that we were in festivals and he was very happy, but but we didn't show it. And for her, it has been very important because uh, she feel that uh, her mourning had be has been a sharing morning mm -hmm. and she's a person that it's really open with the emotions and she really wanted to share the pain and 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 she wanted to be with people so she said that it's a perfect excuse because she wanted to speak about him and the film mm -hmm. uh, helps for that because when you mm -hmm. you know that if someone that you love pass away the people avoid to exp to speak about that in this case the film is a perfect excuse and she's making a lot of Q&A and traveling and she say that she passed the last year so isolated that at the end uh, it, it is a way to come back to the world but taking with the hand of him so uh, it, it's very nice and about her like I have had a lot of doubt at the beginning if I needed to put in the introduction that she was an actress and a minister of culture because I really didn't need it for the script, it was not necessary. But but at the end, it was so important for me because uh, I needed to break the stereotype of the ter caregivers in mm -hmm. Latam mm -hmm. that are always mm -hmm. women that are at home, mm -hmm. and she's a woman that decides to step off her big career the last two three years, mm -hmm. like to be after the lockdown, like to be at the home. So that was very important for me to construct too to understand as she said like everybody have to take care the only way to evolve as a society is to everyone to take care of another human being in some point of our life it's mm -hmm. that doesn't mm -hmm. happen it's impossible yeah. it's like the ultimate act of love yes yes question in the back 
It's not your first <coughs> film on dementia or on Alzheimer's. What is it about that that keeps drawing you in? Sorry, what? What is it about Alzheimer's, about dementia, that keeps drawing you back? It's not your first film yes. about the subject. Yeah, I think what, what moves me is fragility in general, that we hide so much the how to deal with fragility and how to deal with, with the change of the body and the consciousness. So, yeah, I want to explore and share that kind of experience. And at the same time, as a filmmaker, it's as I do observational documentaries, I never interview people, I need to see uh, the reality changing. And in this context, the reality is changing all the time. So I see process mm -hmm. because you need to see uh, structures in cinema. And, and that uh, stages are so full of changes and process that you saw it in an image without needed an interview or another kind of, of stuff that it's not my style. Yeah. Any more comments or questions? I wanted to ask you because one of the things that it's heartbreaking for me is when when Augusto is, is really feeling like my friends are abandoning me, people don't love me anymore, that, that need to feel seen or loved, and how in a way you've given him the ultimate, you know, instrument of love, because now we all love him, and are mm -hmm. sending all this love to them every time that anybody sees the film. So I wonder if like you, were, what, were you conscious, or in which way you felt that your relationship to them was impacting their life during what was happening and after? No, I, I didn't realize during because it was a film that I ha I, I lost the control. Like, mm. I cannot shoot for a while. I never knew when I was going to finish. So I was never conscious of the film that I was doing. I, I understand it in the very late stage of, of editing that was very long. Uh, so I was not conscious of what can the film help them. And indeed, I was very afraid to don't make something that can hurt them. And But yeah, I realized that at the end, really, and, and or now after to, to show it. And, and in Chile, it has been the most, uh, the, the documentary most seeing in the Chilean history. Oh. It was a box office record. The, the first weekend was first in the ranking, and Barbie was second that oh. weekend. Oh. <laughs> and that's because they are so loved in Chile. And, and yeah, so yeah, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect. And, and at the same time, it has been, and it was, it's so universal, and that is something that I discover with the audience. In Chile, do you, it's a still in some cinemas, you go and you see old people and teenagers, and it's weird, and it starts a very weird TikTok trend between <laughs> teenagers, like you enter and you see three million views in each video, so the, some cinemas is full of teenagers that they make like short TikTok video saying like, me before to see the turn of memory and they are very happy and me after to see the turn of memory <laughs> they should have been crying and it starts a kind of challenge in TikTok between them who cries more because that trend and it, yeah, it, it's crazy. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> How are we doing with that? We have one more question. Anybody has it? Yes. Um, I one thing I found so beautiful, they didn't have children, but kind of she became his mother in a way. So yeah. I thought you showed that really beautiful. Uh, yeah, in the middle of, of pandemic, when do we have our diary? And I was alone with my son and she was alone with him. One day I told him, like, I feel very close to you because we are in the same situation. Like we are taking care of children and he got angry mm. and he t she told me like he's not my children he's my husband and it's always going to be my husband so yes and no like mm. and i understand her in a way because mm. 
we associate the, the caregiver to and me also to to my son and but for her it's amazing that for her was always his husband and and she, she tried to build a couple but yeah it's the sense of that we see women uh, taking care all the time and and I see very different reactions and we make focus group between women and men that see the film that about the relationship with the caregivers like uh, yeah you do focus groups really? yeah 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 and it's like <laughs> well women's men's the question almost always like who is going to take care of me like like we yeah it was very very different the rela the <laughs> reactions uh, with the relationships of the caregivers yeah and then my last question um how long were you behind those bushes to get that perfect <laughs> incredible <laughs> shot of <laughs> them like forehead to forehead and then he says thank you for everything mm -hmm. Aye. Yeah, th in that scene, like well, how, like how, how did you know? <laughs> Where were you waiting behind those bushes? <laughs> how, how did I that happen? We were, we were like slowly walking all the morning, very far because I leave them, and it was very slow because well, we shoot for a year, and you, you saw they walk very well at the beginning, the bicycles, and it was like it takes two hours to them to walk for this distance to that one, and. And when they were walking, it was my last day of shooting because in the moment that he said, I'm not anymore, and she said, you are, and he said, no, I'm not. It was the first time in five years that I felt uncomfortable with the camera because it was the first time that he was saying like, I am not in my identity anymore. And, and I didn't want it to be there if he didn't feel good with himself. And they were not saying to me, let's stop here, I will continue for a year and a half, but until he passed away, but that was so so clear in everything that was happening there mm -hmm. that it was a moment of farewell to him with us and of him to her before to lose the language. It was, mm -hmm. something was happening there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we lose, like, <laughs> so I would spend like at least half an hour there when they were like, yeah, speaking and being there, like without speak to, but it was all the morning in that, in that walk. But yeah, it was, but then I started another kind, the, the last year that I was not there uh, with the camera, that I was there, they, they, they started like a new kind of connections that was not verbal language mm -hmm. like they they were really in communication all the time until the end and and some yeah something happened in that house that was always very em an emotional communication like Juliet um his her cat his, their cat that, that you see on the film they they lived there for 15 years and the day that he stopped walking she stopped walking and the day that he stopped seeing, she stopped seeing. And the day that he passed away, she passed away an hour after. Wow. So you say like everything like they were was so, so connected. Yes. In wow. that house. Yeah. Wow. So magic. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you.